he won our first ever um, uh, recipient of the Herd Big J Journalism Award. And we don't hand those out regularly. It's such a prestigious award. We've given out one. <laughs> and it was to Tyler Dunn. He'd covered the Bills and the Packers for years. Now he has GoLongTD.com. GoLongTD.com. Founder and writer. Uh, covers the Packers. Also has Bob McGinn on his staff, who's a legendary writer for the Packers. And Bob came out with a uh, uh, an opinion, a column about something that is something I've been on for years. And I know this is confirmation bias, but I think it's obvious. And I think we saw it against San Francisco is Aaron gets very safe. Um, if he has a two interception game, he shuts it down. And I just don't think you can do that. Brady's had pick sixes in Super Bowls. That's just you just got to keep slinging it. And so, Tyler, your takeaway on Bob McGinn's opinion, assertion, that that it looks like Aaron is a little hyper aware of his passer rating. I'll open with this, Colin, and, and obviously he, he writes for my website, they go long. So uh, no bias here and, and also an unbelievably amazing human being, Bob McGinn. But nobody has watched Aaron Rodgers more closely than Bob from day one training camp practices, exhibition games, regular season games, playoff games. He has seen this quarterback every snap his entire career, and I think he absolutely nailed it. When you get into the playoffs, the windows get tighter, right? I mean, the coverages get more complex. You're playing a San Francisco team where they've got some vulnerabilities in the secondary, but you've got to be willing to gun it in there. Um, you, you mentioned you know, Matt, Matt Stafford, the throw that he made in the Super Bowl, no looking it a tight window he said himself at that point we just had to go to our best player we just had to make a throw in a big situation regardless of what they're doing you go through history Peyton Manning's throw against Baltimore to Dallas Clark on their Super Bowl run just an insane throw Tom Brady every single postseason run the 28 to 3 game the throw to Chris Hogan I mean these are the throws you don't see out of Aaron Rodgers and I think the passer rating especially with the way the rules are set up it's so outdated. It's so prehistoric. You really can't gauge and judge these quarterbacks off of that. And, hey, turning the ball over does matter. We're, we're not sitting here saying, oh, you got to go out there and throw four picks. But, but, but take a chance. I mean, that was as apathetic of a performance in a playoff game that you'll ever see out of a future Hall of Famer. I mean, you're playing Jimmy Garoppolo at home, five-and-a-half-point favorites, and you don't even take those chances down the field. You miss Alan Lazard wide open on and what may be your final throw as a Packer. Um, yeah, it was it was a lot of the same problems you've seen for a decade now out of Aaron Rodgers. It's interesting. They have until March 8 to franchise Devontae Adams, which they're going to keep him, obviously. That's the only way to retain Aaron Rodgers. He's not sticking around without Devontae, I would think. So now I've heard reports now, Tyler, that if they do franchise tag him, that's not what Devontae wants. He wants a longer deal. It's still great money. So kind of give me your sense, temperature in the room on Devontae, his feeling on the Packers, the franchise tag, because they're way, way over the cap. There's a lot of massaging to do here for the front office. You nailed it. They've got some cap issues to sort out here. But when it comes to the football, Devontae Adams wants to play with Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers wants to play with Devontae Adams. And Devontae Adams is not going to want to play at that tag of whatever it's going to be, 20 mil, 21 mil. I think DeAndre Hopkins is at about 27.25. He's going to want to go north of that. He's going to want to be paid more than any wide receiver in NFL history. But the Packers have the leverage here. They can franchise tag him. They can work toward negotiating a deal. Devontae Adams can sit out of offseason workouts, what have you. I think that Green Bay is going to want Devontae Adams in the fold, just as Green Bay wants Aaron Rodgers in the fold. They're, they're going to be willing to pay him whatever he wants. I mean, they're hiring Tom Clements. They're bringing him out of retirement at whatever he is, 68 years old. This is somebody that a decade ago, when I was at the Milwaukee Old Sentinel College, I mean, me and Aaron Rodgers, we'd sit down for an hour every spring. I'll never forget, he went out of his way to say how much Tom Clements meant to him. In terms of his consistency, he called him the biggest factor um, he said he looked up to him as a father figure and that you don't want to let your father down out there. Obviously, a lot's changed the last 10 years down, down that line, down that metaphor. But I think that he still really credits Tom Clements for his development, for getting to where he got to. And Green Bay is willing to say, hey, we'll do whatever you want. Money, Tom Clements, weapons. Sit down here at the personnel table. We'll bring in Randall Cobb, your, one of your best friends, even though that might mean we don't bring in a core special teamer that could prevent disaster. For better or worse, Green Bay is going all in on Aaron Rodgers, and uh, it's in his court. It's in the quarterback's court. Whatever they did behind the scenes, Aaron Rodgers has that ability to get out if he still wants out. So we'll see what happens. I'll tell you what, I know he loves Nathaniel Hackett, 
I had a player tell me last spring that, you know, he may so like Matt LaFleur, tolerate Matt LaFleur, but he loves Nathaniel Hackett. That it's a, a quote, I don't want to mess this up, gooey gaga kind of love in meetings is what one player told me. So and it's it's kind of a battle between his offensive coordinator of old, offensive coordinator today. Um, I, I guess the bachelor comes to the NFL and I, Maybe he'll make a decision sooner this time around. Yeah, so let, let's um, – I mean, Jordan Love, you know, there's a reason you move up in the first round for a Trey Lance or a Jordan Love, and that is to play him by year two. So you can get three years, tarmac, not paying him, surround him with great players. That's how Russell Wilson won a Super Bowl. It's how Jared Goff got to a Super Bowl. That's the game everybody plays. Well, the Niners, I still think, will do that. The Packers have now gone past year two without playing Jordan Love. So I, to me, and they want Aaron back. So that tells me they're not in love with Jordan Love. And they also think Aaron's great. If I said to you today, when will, when will Aaron make his decision public? Are we looking at a week? Because I predicted to you, Alex, I think the other day, I think it's going to be this w- later. You said 10 days. 10 la- days. Last week. So what, what is your guess, Tyler, when we find out? I, I would assume within 10 days, within a week, right? I, he came out and said he's going to make a decision much more quickly this time around. I, I don't think that he drags the Packers out in the public square and, and makes them get embarrassed all offseason long. I think that he's going to figure out what he wants to do relatively quickly. Uh, but, but you're absolutely right on Jordan Love. If you saw the necessary development out of Jordan Love, if you really liked where he, he was, is he call? Because what a luxury it is to have that quarterback on a cheap deal, especially with all of their cap issues, yes. especially with a defense, Kenny Clark, you know, you've got Rashawn Gary, Jair Alexander, you've got some studs on defense. You can win with that defense and you can surround Jordan Love with talent. I, I still think you should go that route. I mean, you can get unlimited picks, unlimited prospects, whatever you want. I mean, what an opportunity still for Green Bay to move on and, and, and signal the Jordan Love era and hey, bring in a veteran quarterback too to compete with them. Um, but their actions are speaking pretty loudly here with the Tom Clements hiring. It, it seems like they want to do everything in their power to bring Aaron Rodgers back. Enterprising football journalism. Go to golongtd.com, golongtd.com. Our friend Tyler Dunn. As always, my friend, great seeing you. Great seeing you, man. Thanks for having me. You bet. Uh, he and Bob again do great work. No, the, it, it, uh, he pointed out something that is really interesting. With Green Bay's cap issues, and they are severe. We saw the Saints go through this a couple years ago. You kind of go all in for a couple years. I, I, I think you should do that. If you have an Aaron Rodgers, a Drew Brees, a Tom Brady, you go all in for a couple years. The way to solve all their cap issues is Jordan Love. And the fact that despite major cap issues, that they're not even considering Jordan Love, that's not really an option publicly. And remember, what gets out is when people want things out. If the Packers really like Jordan Love, we said this, you'd start hearing rumblings of how good he looks at practice. You started hearing that very quickly with Patrick Mahomes. You started hearing that very quickly. He was not playing, and you were getting video leaking. Even uh, Trey Lance last week, a piece of video came out with Trey Lance, him making a sick throw. Like, you'd see video. You'd We're two years in with Jordan. They have major cap issues, and they're not considering it. Like, that tells you the pick was a bust. Like, at some point, even when Aaron Rodgers was behind Favre, you heard stories about, like, this guy's really, really good. You hear stuff. Stuff gets out. Nobody can keep a secret. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.